Oh yeah, it's Monday here on The Story, so we're digging for old with the help of the Oregon Historical Society. And because today is a bank holiday for Indigenous Peoples Day, formerly Columbus Day, we decided to check the Historical Society's online collection for anything that stood out in regards to the holiday. But now let's be clear about one thing. The Historical Society's physical collection of Indigenous items it's immense. They've got a little bit of everything from canoes to baskets to clothing, to sculptures, you name it, they probably have it. And their online collection is no different. Simply typing in Native American gives us more than 60 options to choose from, and the word Indian brings up more than 430. So yeah, we had a bunch of things we could go through and we couldn't actually even make it through everything. But this painting did catch our attention and the story behind it is right, quite fascinating. It comes from 1853, several years before Oregon even became a state. Here's a closer look. It's a charcoal sketch titled Palouse Falls, which is actually a misspelling of Palouse as in the Palouse River in the state of Washington. The drawing was published in an 1856 survey of potential railroad routes to the West Coast. It comes from an artist and map maker who specialized in landscapes and Native American portraits. His name was John Mix Stanley. Stanley explored and painted the American West in the mid 1800s, but despite his influence on American art, he's not a household name, as you might have noticed. And that's because of a fire at the Smithsonian that destroyed hundreds of his works in 1865. So, how did the Oregon Historical Society get its hands on this surviving piece? Well, the chief curator for OHS in the 1960s found it at a thrift store. Yeah, a thrift store right here in Portland. That was back in 1960. You never know what you're going to find at a local secondhand store. Now, let's move on to our second item. And this one references Christopher Columbus. This is from 1892. It's an aluminum medallion showcasing the Republican ticket for U.S. president that year. Incumbent President Benjamin Harris and the party's new choice for vice president, a man named Whitelaw Reed from New York. On the flip side of the medallion is a picture of the landing of Columbus in America against the backdrop of the world globe. This was meant to honor the 400th anniversary of said landing in 1492. While the medallion certainly looks nice, its ultimate goal failed. The 1892 presidential election was a rematch of the 1888 election. And this time around, President Harrison was defeated by former Democratic President Grover Cleveland. That win for Cleveland, by the way, allowed him to become the only president in U.S. history to serve two non-consecutive terms. The medallion was donated to the Historical Society in the late 1980s by a man named Stephen Bibler. He donated, listen to this, over 7,000 political items that some of them dated back to 1828, including buttons from every single presidential election through 1986. So that's just a glimpse into the Historical Society's online collection. It is vast. It is fascinating. It is something that we are going to keep mining, and we hope that you enjoy digging for old as much as we do. And if you, by the way, have ideas for our segment you'd like us to look into, please let us know. Our email is thestory at kgw.com, or you could call and leave a voicemail, 503-226-5090.